covet your prayers this morning. Obviously, this is a difficult day for our church body. Brother Rogers come and share the status of what's going on with Miss Judy. Um, but I want to remind you of the words that uh, we're just saying a, a few moments ago. No matter the bumps, no matter the bruises, we still have this truth of who our God is. And so life is hard, life is difficult, but I'm thankful that we can take comfort from God's Word. And uh, that's what we're praying for this morning. Uh, this last week, uh, Brother Roger kind of, uh, as we found out some different things, he asked if I would fill in the pulpit this morning. And so uh, I agreed to do that to be a help. And, uh, God put a message on my heart in lieu of this weekend, but I, I think it's one that bears great significance for us, and I hope it will bring you some comfort today. Um, as you know, it is Memorial Day weekend, and it's a, it's a weekend where we do remember the sacrifice that so many have made for the freedom of our country, and uh, it is not a holiday that we take lightly. Uh, I know a lot of churches will honor uh, those that have paid that ultimate sacrifice in different ways. And, uh, I heard the story of one church who made a, a bulletin board that they had decorated for Memorial Day. It was decorated with pictures of soldiers who had died in service to their country. And it was trimmed in red, white, and blue. It had little flags on it. There was a little boy who was looking up at the board when the pastor came up. And he asked the little boy how he liked the board. The boy asked what it was about. And the pastor explained that the pictures were the men from their church who had died in the service. The little boy said, was it the morning service or the evening service? <laughs> I do want to be sensitive to uh, the needs of our church this morning, but uh, I, I think it's good for us to laugh just a little bit. This morning, I do want to focus on a particular passage of scripture. If you have your Bible, if you'll open it up to Judges chapter two. I think today is uh, an important day in the life of our church for multiple reasons, but I think it's also an opportunity for us to reflect on, on God's faithfulness to our church body and, and uh, to, to pray and be there for Brother Roger, but also to remember the sacrifice of so many and especially what it is that our Lord and Savior has done for us. If you have your Bible, Judges chapter 2 starting in verse 6 is where we're going to be at. This is... Uh, kind of a synopsis, if you will, of, um, of the, the status of Israel and what was going on in the nation. And this is some important words for us to heed this morning. Judges chapter 2, starting in verse 6. After Joshua had dismissed the Israelites, they went to take possession of the land, each to their own inheritance. The people served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him, who, who had seen all the great things that the Lord had done for Israel. Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110, and they buried him in the land of his inheritance at Timnath. Timnath Heres in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Kaash. After the whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baals. They forsook the Lord and they followed and worshipped the various gods of the peoples that were around them. I don't know if you see what's happening in this verse of Scripture, but God had made a promise to the Israelites that He would be with them, protect them, lead them into the promised land. And once God had led them into the promised land, something very, very grave begins to happen. God is faithful. He's there. He's present. As Joshua is alive and as the elders that followed Joshua were alive. But after they passed away, there was a generation who rose up who did not know who God was. That is a scary indictment on the people of Israel at that time that they had forgotten who the Lord was. And this morning I want us to stop and to think and to reflect on why it is that this happened. So if you would, let's go to the Lord in prayer together and ask His blessing on our remaining time as we continue through His Word. Father, we come before you right now and just thank you for your Word. That uh, Through it we can find comfort, we can find grace, we can find um, strength to help carry us through those difficult and, and, and 
hard seasons of our life. We'll pray, God, this morning that we wrap your arms around your church. God, that you would rain down through your Holy Spirit comfort and grace and help us to do all that we need to as your people. Father, I pray for Brother Roger and Miss Judy and that you would continue to bless and be with them. Give them grace, Lord. And as we continue this morning in this service, be with us. Comfort our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we asked the question, how was it that the people of Israel had forgotten the Lord? How did this generation forget the Lord? Now remember real briefly that Joshua, as they were crossing the Jordan, uh, as they were coming into the promised land and there were all these different gods, Joshua drew a line in the sand, if you remember the story in Joshua chapter 24. He says, hey, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you today, then choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your forefathers or the gods of the people in whose land we are now in. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Joshua drew that line in the sand and he said, come on, choose today who you're going to serve. Serve either the foreign gods that you're bowing down and worshiping to in secret or come and serve the Lord full heartedly, wholeheartedly. And the people said, far be it from us to worship any other gods except Yahweh. We will serve the Lord. And they chose that day to follow Joshua's example, to embrace the Lord and to be faithful to him. I love that example that as they come through the land that, that Joshua uh, sets this example. We're going to serve God. Amen. If you remember, as they crossed through the Jordan River into the promised land, God gave them certain instructions that they were to, uh, in that moment, collect stones that would be placed on the other side of the Jordan so that when everyone saw these stones, these 12 stones piled up on one another, that they would remember what it was that God had done. Yeah. But here now, after Joshua has passed away, after the elders that followed Joshua had passed away, now a generation grows up that does not remember who God is. So the question then comes again. How did the people forget? How did this generation forget who God was? I've got several reasons why I think that they forgot. We're going to look at these each, but I think one of the first things that causes us to forget who God is and His significance, His importance in our life is when religion becomes routine in our lives. When religion becomes routine. Where we get in the habit of just going through the motions of different things. I think that's what happened with the people of Israel. That God had instructed them to be faithful and to observe all these different things. But what happened was each of these things that God had instructed them to do just became empty and meaningless. These things were just routine and they were going through the motions. That's a dangerous place to be. When we just go through the motions. I heard a story this week as I was preparing about a woman and a husband, a wife and a husband, who had a tradition. Every day, the woman would take her husband and drop him off at a commuter train station. One day at this train station, a, a policeman noticed the woman driver with her head bound, bound over the steering wheel, and she was obviously in discomfort. The police officer asked her, is there anything wrong now? Half crying and half laughing, she said. For 10 years, I've been driving my husband to the station every morning to catch this train. This morning, I forgot him. <laughs> Tell him, when religion becomes routine, when we just go through the motions, dangerous things can happen. And just like this woman forgot her husband, it's easy to forget those things that are so important. So, the solution that we have to remember lest we let our faith become routine, is we need to remember. Amen. We need to remember. That's the solution to our religion becoming routine. What do we remember? I think it's important for us to remember the examples of others. Those people that have served well and those people who have not served so well. 
I remember uh, in the Gospels, in the book of Luke, Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's telling them that in the later days, in the last days, that what's going to happen is that people are going to be running up on top of their houses because of the calamity and the different things that are going on. And one of the things that he says to his disciples is on that day when things begin to go south, remember the example of Lot's wife. And if you remember Lot's wife, when God had instructed Lot and his family to leave Sodom and Gomorrah, they were leaving out. And God said, don't even look back. And as they were fleeing from the city, Lot's wife looked back. And if you remember what took place, she turned instantly into a pillar of salt. That obviously is not a commendable example, but Jesus says, remember that example, lest you be like her. So it's important for us to remember the example of those who have served well, but also those that have made mistakes and us learn from those mistakes. If we'll do that, if we'll remember those examples of those that have served well and those that have made mistakes, then... It will help us to keep our religion from becoming routine. First Thessalonians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church of Thessalonica, and he's commending them and instructing them. And you find these words, and I really want to focus in on this, this particular phrase in this passage. But in verse 2 of chapter 1, you see this. Paul says, we always thank God for all of you, and we continually mention you in our prayers. And notice verse 3. We remember... Before our God and Father, what? We remember your work that was produced by faith, your labor that was prompted by love, and your endurance that inspired hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, when we remember the example of others, when we remember those that have served well, then it inspires us, it produces things in us, and causes, causes us to not let our religion become routine. So the second thing this morning that I think causes us to forget our God and to move away from Him is that we allow the meaningful things to become mundane. That those things that once were profound in our lives, they begin to lose their significance. The meaningful becomes mundane. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but you get so focused on everything else that's going on, or, or maybe one thing, maybe you just zero in on one thing, that you lose sight of everything else around you. I saw this in a story that I read this week uh, about a, an older woman who called her local paper. She was asking them, she was she was kind of furious, in fact. She called and uh, she, she was asking her local newspaper some questions. Loudly, as she called them, she demanded to know where her Sunday edition of the paper was. The voice on the other end of the line said, Ma'am, today is Saturday. The Sunday paper is not delivered until Sunday. And there was, a, there was quite a pause on the other end of the phone, followed by a ray of recognition. So that's why no one was in church today. <laughs> Listen, I want you to know this morning that it's possible to, to, to be so focused in on one thing that we lose sight of, of those things that are important. And when that happens, when we lose sight of those things that are important, then the meaningful things in our life often tend to become mundane. And so the solution to this is I think that we recognize the significance of the moment that we're in. I think that it's important for us to recognize the significance of the moments that we are in. Moments like today, when our pastor stands before us and shares unfortunate news. But I remind you, church, that God is still on His throne. And that the testimony of our pastor's wife is... This will work out for good one way or another. Amen. And that God is going to receive glory in this. And we realize the significance of the moment. Allow those things that are supposed to be high and exalted to be high and exalted. To Amen. be important in our life. Especially our God, our Lord, our Savior. And then the third thing that I would share with you as to why it is that the people forgot the Lord. And why sometimes we 
forget who God is, is that our devotion diminishes. Our devotion diminishes. When that happens, when our devotion diminishes, we need to recount God's faithfulness. We need to recount God's faithfulness. When we recount God's faithfulness, we begin to get encouraged. We begin to see who God is in a new light as we recount the different ways that God has been faithful. And church, I would encourage you this morning that as Brother Roger has come today and as he shared these things, recount all of God's faithfulness in the past, how he has moved and how he has worked and, and, and done such powerful things that when we dwell on the faithfulness of who God is and what he's already done, then that inspires continued perseverance, continued commitment to the Lord. And so recount God's faithfulness. Even share that with the people that are around you. Recount God's faithfulness. Recount His power, how He's worked before. And then recount those that have made sacrifices and have shown love. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, the Apostle Paul writes and he encourages the church with these final words in chapter 4. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, then think about these things. That when we will do that, that we will be encouraged in our own faith to be faithful, to persevere, and we'll find renewed strength. You see, what happened with the people of Israel and that generation that grew up that didn't know God was... They didn't take the time to, to recognize what God had done. Their devotion had diminished. Remember, God told Joshua to set up these stones that every time that they would be seen, that the fathers would tell their children what it was that God had done. We don't know if those fathers didn't fulfill that promise to do that or, or if they just didn't heed it. The fact remains that whether it was told and passed on or not, they chose themselves not to honor God and their devotion waned and they grew away from God. It helps if we will consider the sacrifice and the service of other people. And today is Memorial Day. And I think it's important for us to pay tribute to those that have lost their life in service to our country. As I was getting ready for this sermon, I came across this story talking about the signers of the Declaration of Independence for our country. Fifty-six men signed the Declaration of Independence. Their conviction resulted in untold sufferings for themselves and for their families. Of the 56 men, five were captured by, British, by the British and they were tortured before they died. Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. Two lost their sons in the Revolutionary Army. Another had two sons that were captured. Nine of the 56 fought and died from wounds or hardships of the war. Carter Braxton of Virginia, a wealthy planter and trader, saw his ships sunk by the British Navy. He sold his home and properties to pay his debts, and he died in poverty. At the Battle of Yorktown, the British General Cornwallis had taken over Thomas Nelson's home for his headquarters. Nelson quietly ordered General Washington to open fire on his old home. The home was destroyed and Nelson died bankrupt. John Hart was driven from his wife's bedside as she lay dying. Their 13 ch children fled for their lives. His fields and meal were destroyed. For over a year, he lived in forests and caves, returning home only to find that his wife had died and his children had vanished. A few weeks later, he died also from exhaustion. You see, it's been said before that love that costs nothing is worth nothing. I want you to know that in this, you see a sacrifice of those that were willing to pay the ultimate cost. Whether it affected their families or whether it affected them personally, it mattered not because something 
significant was happening and taking place in their lives and they knew they needed to stand up for it. In John chapter 15, verse 13, we find these words of Jesus where he says, no one has greater love than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. Amen. Greater love has no one this, than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. This morning, it is Memorial Day weekend, and we want to recognize or remember those that have paid that ultimate cost. Because greater love has no one than this. And they that lay down their lives for their friends. As I was preparing for the sermon, I came across this story. That was related in Our Daily Bread, which many of you read as a devotion. It told the story of Oliver Cromwell during the 17th century. Oliver Cromwell was the Lord Protector of England. He sentenced a soldier to be shot for his crimes. The execution was to take place at the ringing of the evening curfew bell. However, the bell did not sound that night. The soldier's fiance had climbed into the belfry and clung to the great clapper of the bell to prevent it from striking. When she was summoned by Cromwell to account for her actions, she wept as she showed him her bruised and bleeding hands. Cromwell's heart was touched. And he said, your love, your lover shall live because of your sacrifice. Cur curfew shall not ring tonight. I want you to know that greater love has no one than this. That a person be willing to lay down their life. Amen. This woman in this story, she was willing to do whatever it was to save her fiance. It's important for us to remember that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, laid down his life to save us from cruel things. So as we remember those that have made that ultimate sacrifice, let us remember most of all Jesus, who paid the price for our sins. In, in a moment, we're going to pray and we'll be dismissed. But today we're going to close a little bit differently. I'm going to ask Benny if you'll turn this mic on at the front. But we do want to honor those that have paid that price. If there's somebody that is in your family that you want to share and recognize and honor them, we'd ask you to come to this microphone and just say their name in honor of their sacrifice. So as a church body, I want to ask all of us to stand together. And if you'd like to come forward to share that name, I encourage you to do so. And in a few moments, we'll pray and then we'll have a time of invitation. So if you'd like to come, now's the time. Jesse Frank Stevenson, World War II. Jimmy Boyd, Vietnam. George D. Gilbreth. Carol Hoovey, World War II. Army Berry, Army. Jackie Green, World War II. JJ Cohen. George and Marvin Yard, World War II. As we remember those that have made that sacrifice. Jesus also paid the price that we might have victory over sin and death. Let's pray together, and then if you need to make a decision for the Lord this morning, I encourage you to do so. Father, we come before you today and thank you for the great love that you've shown us in Jesus in coming and, and 
paying that ultimate price, dying on the cross to pay for our sins. God, we know that freedom costs dearly. Whether it's freedom in our country or freedom in our own faith, God. I, I pray that uh, this morning you would move and work and remind us of these different examples that we've looked at this morning of how a generation forgot who you were. God, lest we follow that example, let us be diligent to not follow that example, to be sincere, to remember who you are, to recount your faithfulness, your power, your strength. Father, help us to do that as a people. Father, we love you and we give you thanks. And for those that need to make a decision today, God, we ask that you would put that on their heart to come forward. God, maybe there's people here in our church that want to come to this altar and pray for Brother Roger or Miss Judy or Maybe they need to uh, rededicate their lives this morning. We pray that today they will follow that example of your word. Lord, we love you and we give you thanks. We pray this in Jesus' name. You respond as the Lord leads you.